For this module, you'll be acquiring force data from a load cell. We're also going to need some new hardware to stimulate the frog sciatic nerve. That's the nerve that innervates the gastroc muscle. The load cell is the same type that you'll be used for the smooth muscle response lab. We'll connect it as before through the amplifier. Make sure to have no high pass filter or have it DC coupled and set a low pass filter that's appropriate for the type of signal that you expect to get. We will use a current stimulator to induce muscle contractions in the frog. This stimulator works by outputting a known current pulse from leads on the front panel of the device. The stimulator outputs a very short pulse just long enough to trigger an action potential. The pulse is generated or triggered by a digital signal from our Ethernet DAX and that connector is located on the back side of the device. Uh, this trigger signal is connected by a BNC cable from the DAC to the stimulator. The power switch is also on the back of the device. Make sure that you use uh, this power switch and turn off the device after you use it. On the DAC, the voltage analog signal will get digitized in the left module as before. The right digital I.O. module will be set up to output a digital signal for triggering the stimulator. Once you've connected the wires, turn on the stimulator. You can find an example LabVIEW VI for this module in the shared folder of T-Square under the Resources section. Open the Frog Lab LabVIEW library file and find the example st uh, stimulation VI. This VI is the only VI that you'll need to complete the length tension deliverable. Make sure that you connected to your Ethernet DAC via Measurement and Automation Explorer. Enter the correct hardware lines for both the load cell and stimulator. I set the total number of pulses to 20 for this example and the pulse period to 1 second so we can visualize the pulses on the stimulator. We'll have to arm the stimulator, uh, but first, a uh, little bit about safety. Make sure you never uh, touch both ends of the stimulator across your heart, so this is kind of important. Make sure the stimulator is working before you work on frogs. Run the example VI with multiple pulses. Make sure that the pulse amplitude knob is not engaged. Isolate the stimulator leads from one another and turn the pulse amplitude knob counterclockwise until you feel some resistance. You should see the green LED blinking faintly. At this point, the stimulator is not delivering a current or it's delivering a current with an amplitude of zero milliamps. If you increase the current to something other than zero, the yellow light will blink, indicating a bad pulse. You can touch the two electrode leads together to ensure that the yellow blinking light will turn into a green blinking light, indicating that the correct current is running between the leads.